You know, for so many years, I would always begin uh, by saying, open your Bibles, too. <laughs> and, and that still is true, but most of you have your, your Bibles on your, on your telephones. How many people uh, still bring the hard copy? Anybody? Okay, there's a few of us. For whatever reason, I just, I just love bringing my hard copy, but it's, you know what? It's easier to forget your hard copy these days. <laughs> okay. Well, our small group, a small group, uh, our church is made of small groups. And uh, our small group, uh, usually, we usually uh, uh, pick um, a, um, pardon? Not really a topic, uh, we, we pick books of the Bible, and we, uh, we uh, go through uh, the books of the Bible, and it, you know, you can hardly never get too much of the Word of God in us. I mean, really, that's, that gives us our strength. That gives us our, our direction. It, it, it breathes life into us. And at any rate, we, we finished up a, a, a book, uh, the book of 1 John, um, which is an, an excellent and wonderful uh, book. And uh, there, was, there was a passage uh, in that book that accosted my attention and it has been rolling over in my mind for a number of weeks. We probably have been finished with that book. We're, we're in Second Peter now. But, um, but um, so this sermon is an outgrowth of that Bible study that we did. And I believe that it is, uh, the text that we will be looking at today is, it's a critical text. It's a critical scripture uh, for the day and age in which we live and the culture, the culture that we find ourselves in today. And God knows, God knows I don't want to bring offense to uh, anyone but sometimes we have to speak very clearly on certain issues because those issues push. Those issues push upon uh, each of us in our families, in our individual um, uh, life, and in the life of the church. And the, 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 point, the point at which the culture or the society pushes upon us, we have to take certain stands and not, um, not be blown over by the winds of, of change. Um, and so I, I, I just want to say that before we begin. So Father, we thank you for giving us this time here this morning. We say that you are good. We say that you are true. The Bible says that you are true and everyone else is a liar, Lord. We are, Lord, each of us. Uh, try as we might, Lord, we fail in so many ways, and we acknowledge that. That's, that's why we're all here this morning. We're here because we have need of thee. And so, Father, we pray that you would open up the word of God to us, that you would strengthen us and fortify us. And, Lord, Ethan said this morning that he said something that I caught, that we are soldiers, and that's, that's what we are. We're part of your kingdom, Lord. And we pray that we would be faithful soldiers and that we would be faithful members of your family, Lord. This world is not our home. We are just passing through. And help us, Lord, to remember that, knowing that we're just, uh, we're just bivouacking. We're just camping, Lord. We're just passing through. To the, and we're looking forward to the eternal kingdom, Lord, and to the time that we will be with you forever and ever. And we pray that we would allow that thought and that truth, Lord, to adjust and to lead and to guide us in these troubling days. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'd like to begin by, by reading a scripture found in 1 John. This is the scripture that I've been pondering uh, here. I'd like to read 1 John uh, 2, verses 15 through 17. We're going to go through a lot of scriptures. Most of them we're just going to hit just uh, for uh, the brevity 
of, um, of reading it and acknowledging uh, and supporting what this particular scripture says right here. It says, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is, is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. You know, when you break this scripture down, I don't know about you, but part of this scripture, it, it, it made me scratch my head just a little bit there. Because in some ways it seems so completely out of place. And it seems to contra contradict what Christians are all about. Because Christians are lovers. We should love. The Bible says that God is love and, and, and we should love because he first loved us. Isn't that true? We should love more than anyone else. We should love God with all our heart, our mind, and our soul, and our strength. And we should love our neighbors as ourselves. There's many commands in the word of God. Both in the Old and the New Testament, many commands that we are to love one another. And that, that, that's how the world knows that we are Christians. By our love. Remember that song? One of the first songs that I learned when I became a believer. They will know that we are Christians by our love. Well, the Bible says that we're supposed to love our enemies. Now, that's, that's an amazing thing right there. And Jesus took Peter to task with that same scripture. This is what Paul says in Romans 13, 8 through 10. He says, owe no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you, you shall not cover. And if there, is anything other, is, if there is any other commandment, all are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of of the law. And so once again, we're reading we should love one another. We should love one another. And and then and then it says uh, John 3:16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe on him should not perish but shall have everlasting life. And so this scripture right here, the scripture that I just read in the opening do not love the world or the things in the world. It, it seems to contradict one of the most loved and, and, and quoted scriptures, passages in scripture. It comes to a shock. It came to a shock to me when I read this slowly and I pondered over it. John, 1 John 2.15, it says, do not Love. Do not love. Think about that. Stop at those words and ponder those words in light of everything else, all the, script, the other scriptures that we've already commented on. Do not love. Those three words. It's do not love. You know what that is in English? That is a command. Do not love. So we are commanded in scripture... Not to love. So if we violate scripture, what is that called? If we violate scripture, the Bible says that we are in sin. So what does this passage say? This passage says that one of the, one of the things that this passage says, this is important. Love can be Sinful. Love can be 
sinful. And I believe that's an important word for the day and age in which we live. Love can be sinful because we live in a culture. We live in a culture that needs to hear that word. We, we need to know and understand that because we live in a culture that's pushing against that notion right there. Society comes hard. Our society comes hard against us with the love is love mentality. How can you, how can you be against love? How, how can you say that that's not love? That's not very Christian of you. God is love. How can you, how can you say otherwise? If two people love one another, now this text states that sometimes love can be a sin. This whole, this whole area here, in the culture in which we live today, and it's come upon, it's come upon us, it's come upon the church, it's come upon our society, it's come upon the world, and it's bowled us over in so many ways. But this is where the rubber meets the road. What makes love sinful? Or under what circumstances can love be sinful? I believe love can become sinful if it's, if it's, directed, if it's directed at the wrong object. Verse 15, it says, Love not the world, nor the, neither the things in the world. Why don't we pause right here and, take, and just take a, a quick look. at what, is the wor- what does the word world mean? It has different meanings, actually. In Scripture, it has different meanings. One of the meanings is the, wor- the, wor- the word cosmos. It's that which God has created. The world in which God has created. And when we see the majesty of a, of a, a sunrise or a sunset or the mountain, just talking about that, that's, that's not what we're talking about here. That's not the type of world that we're talking about that we shouldn't love. We quoted John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, what what is the word word, world they're referring to? It's referring to people. It's referring to the people. God loves the world. God loves the people that inhabit the earth. And so should we. We should love all people, care for all people. The Bible says do good to all people, but especially those of the household of faith. And so it's, that's not the type, that's not the word world that, we, that we're talking about right here. I'm not talking about the, the created earth and the created uh, universe. We're not talking about people because we are called to love, care for people, to be sensitive to their needs. But there's a, there's a third meaning of this uh, word world that refers to the spiritual realm, the spiritual realm that is in opposition to God's kingdom. That's in opposition and rebellion to his kingdom. That, that's, that's what this is talking about right here. Don't love that system. Don't love that world that is in opposition and in rebellion against the righteous reign and rule of Jesus Christ. Don't love that. Love people? Yes, yes, love people. Love is his creation. We don't want to go overboard on loving his creation or we will start worshiping the creation. That's what we're talking about here. The realm that is in opposition. John is saying that your love is sinful when your love is directed to that system right there that rebels against Jesus Christ and and his kingdom. And that system ultimately is ruled by Satan, 
talks about that in 1 John also in the following chapters right there. John makes it clear that behind, behind all of this, there's, there's an enemy, there's an entity. And we, once again, when you said the word soldiers, I, I, my ears just perked up. We're not of this kingdom. We're not of this world. We have been called out of this into the kingdom of his dear son, the Bible says. 1 John 3, 1 says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called the children of God. Therefore the world, that system, it does not know us, because it did not know him. That's what we're talking about here. We are in opposition to that. 1 John 3, 13, don't, don't, don't marvel, my brethren, if the world hates you, okay? 1 John 4, 4, 1, beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because there are many false prophets that have gone out into the world. That's the world that we're talking about here. 1 John 4, 3, and every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. And so we have, we have a, a cosmic conflict going on. And we are called not to embrace, not to to cozy up with that system that is under the, the domain and under the rule of that. 1 John 4, 5. They are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. So there are some people that are under control, there are some people that are under control and it's, not, and it's not wrong to be led of the true spirit of God. It's a wonderful thing to be controlled by his loving Holy Spirit. To allow him to call the shots for our life. Because the Bible says we don't know how to come in. We don't know how to go out. That's why we have the Holy Spirit to lead us and to guide us. And, and all the, all the, that, that's what we're talking about. Or we can be led of another spirit. The evil one that controls and pulls the strings behind the scenes of this world. But it is becoming more evident as the days grow more evil. Things are starting to really come as you, you know, we say out of the closet. How do we deal with this? How do we live in this day and age? The word of God right here is giving us some very important information. Love, not that system. Don't be part of that system. Don't buy in to that lie. Don't cozy up to it. Rescue those that are perishing. We're told not to love that world. Our love can become sinful when it's directed on the wrong object. James 4.4, 4, adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. I don't know about you, but that seems to be pretty clear. That's clear right there. God wants it to be very, very clear for us because he doesn't want us to step into the, 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 the landmines or the quicksand will that, will, that will drag us down and keep us far away. And, and, and folks, we know people have fallen away because of that, because of the love, love of the world. And it talks about that in verse, I think, 2, 18 and 19. We'll mention that a, a little bit later. No man or woman can serve two masters. Finish the scripture for me. You're going to what? You're going to love one, and you're going to hate the other. You can't serve two masters. You can't have one foot in and one foot out. You can't love the world, that system, and love God simultaneously. Just, it, 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 the, two, the two just don't go together at all. It's like mixing oil and water. 
Hey, by the way, you ever make um, uh, some sort of like, um, the, you put vinegar and oil together, you know, and have, that, have a nice salad, you know, and you add a little herbs and stuff to it. What do you have to do before you put that on your salad? You have to shake it up. You have to shake it up pretty good because they don't mix. You have to eat it real quickly before they separate. Yeah, same thing we're talking about here. You can't love the world, that world, and love the world or the kingdom of God at the same time. Can't serve two masters. One of the first scriptures that I ever memorized, and my memory is getting, getting weaker and weaker the older I get, it seems, but was it's Colossians 1.13. For he has delivered us. He has delivered us out of the kingdom of darkness. And translated, that's what the King James, but, or transferred, that's a better, uh, that's a more understandable. God has taken us out of the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son. Wow. Can't serve two masters. You're in one kingdom or you're in the other and we are not called to love the world system that is under the reign and rule of a rebellion that started with Lucifer can't serve two masters. 1 John 2.19, this is not in your notes, but it says, they went out from us. They went out from us because they were not of us. If they had been of us, they would have continued. But they went out that they might be manifested that none of them were of us. See, there was defections there. There was defections right there as, as he talks about that. Love not the world, neither the things of the world. If you love the world, the love of God is not in you. And then after a couple verses later, he says, there were defections. People left. They left. The reason they left is because they, are, they had their eyes on this system. They had the eyes. They loved this world system rather than the system of Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God, right there. Their love and their affection was pointed in the wrong direction. We have to, folks, we have to, we have to stay pointed in the right direction. We have to teach and train and model godliness to those that come after us, to our children, to our grandchildren. We have to be very clear about this. There's, 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 there's two systems out there. There's two, we're talking about world views here. 1 John 5, 4. For whoever is born of God overcomes. Whoever is born of God translated, transferred into the kingdom of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. Our faith. Our faith in whom? Jesus Christ. He did for us what we can't do for ourselves. He placed us into the kingdom. John 15, 19. You were of the world. The world, if you were of the world, the world will love its own. Yet, because you are not of the world, I chose you out of the world. Therefore, the world hates you. So don't be surprised. You want to walk with God. Not everybody is going to agree with you. You will be hated. They don't know you. They don't know your personality. They don't know what, the good that you've done for, for other people and serving other people and caring for other people and loving other people. But if they know that you're of the kingdom of Jesus Christ, they hate you because of that. And that is only, be, uh, only becoming more uh, common and, uh, and soon it's only going to increase. And that's why, we need to, that's why we need to have clear understanding a clear understanding of, of what we're up against, of what, the, the wrestling match that we find ourselves in, folks. J Jesus now is praying for, his, he's praying for his disciples before he goes to the cross. And he says this, they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. And 17, 18, as you sent me into the world, he's talking to the Father, as you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. So there's two systems, two, two worldviews, and they are in opposition one to another. But we need to be careful. We need to be careful when we're, when we're loving, loving God and, and uh, uh, concerned for the things that, that, that we can appreciate. You know, folks, there's, there's, Christians should appreciate the world and the cosmos that 
have been given to us because we see things in a different we see things in a different way we see things in a different manner we see that God is the creator and we can appreciate that we can appreciate the if we go on vacation this summer or whatever and we 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 see uh, some some big hills or mountains or green grasses and and sometimes in the spring you're you're driving you're taking a drive or something and the grass is so green and you marvel at that you just might say man isn't that awesome or you, or you go to, to Lake Michigan and you take a nice drive and you, and you sit at the beach there and you see the waves lapping uh, in one after another. That's an awesome thing. But in seeing that, we give glory to the maker. We, we glory and we honor him. We don't worship the, 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 the cre- created things. or We don't worship the created beings. We have to be very careful about that. Always giving God the glory. We love people that God created because this is the kind of love that comes from God himself we don't want to cross the boundary is what I'm saying That's, we don't want to cross any boundaries give God the glory and appreciate it even more our love becomes sinful when it produces bad fruit. The world is passing away and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Here we have a a world that is passing away. This world, this world that we see is passing away. It's here today and gone tomorrow. But if we trust and we abide in Jesus, the Bible says that that is something that will abide forever. And so, folks, we have to choose. There's a choice to be made. Every one of us has to make it. Nobody can make it for you. You either choose life or you choose death, ultimately. That's what it's saying here. The world passes away, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Our passions, we should be passionate about so many things, and sometimes our passions can get in the way, and sometimes our passions can lead us the wrong way. Our passions become sinful when they are pointed in a direction that leads to death. This has never happened to me, but it's happened to to Pastor Rod in in a counseling session right here. He was counseling with an individual one time, and this individual asked uh, ask Rod, uh, he says, can you pray for me? And Rod says, sure, I can pray for you. And, um, and uh, the individual said, can you pray that, uh, that um, I want to get divorced and marry somebody else? That's, that's basically what that, is. if I recall, the, this was many, many years ago. You know? And basically Rod said, well, I don't need to pray for that. You shouldn't do that. <laughs> that's, that's, not, that's not Bible. Got to be clear about certain things. That, that's not Bible. I was thinking about this scripture here. I, I uh, put, the, put this scripture in uh, before. In Proverbs 6, 27 through 29. This is something that we need to heed. It says this, Can a man, can a man take fire into his bosom? And his clothes not be burned? Well, you can only if you're Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego cast in the, in the fiery furnace. They came out and they didn't, they didn't even smell like smoke. Well, that, that's one case. But can a man take fire into his bosom, though, in his heart? That's what it's talking about. Can you take fire in your heart and your clothes not be burned? Can, can one walk on hot coals and his feet not be seared? And then it says this. He who goes into another neighbor's wife uh, whoever touches her shall not be innocent. That's a, that's a dire warning for us. We don't want to be part of that. We don't want to be part of that kingdom, that system that says, that's okay, that's not okay. I didn't say that. The word of God says that. All I'm just the messenger. I'm just the mailman. What I'm saying is that there's no... There's no life. There's no real life in living for this type of 
attitude, this type of mentality, this type of system that we see all around us that's trying to drag us into it. The Bible says, come out and be ye what? Separate. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. We are here as agents of Christ, not only to magnify and to glorify him, but also to help rescue and pull people from the fire. And we do them no justice. We do them no good by placating their evil desires. We don't. We have to speak truth. We have to speak it in love, but we have to speak it. To do otherwise, to do otherwise is really not to love them. Does that make sense? Not to love them. Because we're talking about eternity here, folks. We're just not talking about the next couple, three, four, five years. We're not talking about this lifetime. We're talking about the decisions that we make will affect us in a hundred years from now, in a thousand years from now. We have to understand that. So when we hear the words, well, man, well, why don't you people just, just get over it? Love is love. Yeah. You say that particularly when it comes to same-sex attractions. That's pushing, that's pushing, that's pushing on the church like never, never before. I don't, I don't share... I don't share as much as I used to. And I, and I, I kind of like that because it's, it's hard to get up every Sunday. It's, it, it is. But I, when, I, when I do share, I will be encouraging and strengthening and trying to buttress everyone to be aware of what's going around us so that you and I and we and those that come after us will not get sucked into the vortex that is around us. Folks, we need to keep our eyes open. We need to be sensitized to the Holy Spirit in the day and age in which we live. Because really, the days are evil. And we have to be aware of that. If we're not aware of that, will anybody be aware of that? How can you be opposed to something like that? If two people are loving one another, that's the love of the world. And we are called not to love that. We should be allowed to express their love. See, that, that, that's a love that's pointed at the wrong object. That, that is a love that will bear, the Bible says, bad fruit. That's, that's not a love that comes from God. That's not a love that brings honor and glory to him. It's not. <laughs> Romans 1, 18 through 27. I we'll, want we'll to read this scripture and just make a couple remarks and then go home. But once again, the thing that accosted my attention was love, do not love. It says do not love. There are some things that we are called not to love. Do not love. Do not love the world. Do not love this system. Do not get pulled into the system. And everywhere you look, folks, today, everywhere you look, in every, every area, every niche of our culture and society is imbued with the system of this world and not the system of Christ. And it will only be exacerbated in the days ahead. Who would have thunk 10 years ago we'd be even dealing with this kind of stuff? Who would have thunk even two years ago we would be dealing with some of the issues that we're dealing with now, with the mutilation of little kids. That's another whole subject. For the wrath of God, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven 
against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were they thankful, but become futile in their thoughts. We can become very futile in our thoughts. We should be, we should be, God, we should soak up the word of God in us so that when we see something that's fake, it will be clear to us because, because we've been so saturated, so saturated with truth. God is, God is true and everyone else is a liar. We are. That's why we need him. That's why we need to understand and to know the word of God. Be in the word of God. Feast upon it. The more you do, see here's, the more you do, the more hungry you are for that. It's like eating sugar. It's like eating candy. It's like eating carbohydrates. The more you eat them, the more you want to eat them. Isn't that right? The more sugar we have, the more candy we have, the more we want, the more we crave it. The more, the more, the more we have of God, the more we will crave. And if, you, if you're not there yet, that's okay. God will take us where we're at. It's a journey. It's a journey. It doesn't happen overnight, folks, but it will happen and it does happen. Love God. Glorify him. They weren't thankful. They became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, professing to be wise, became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible corruptible God into an image made of corruptible man, birds and four-footed animals, creeping things, worshiping, worshiping the created rather than the creator. And therefore, therefore, because of these things, therefore, because of these things, God gave them up. You, you want that? Go for it. And once again, you, you, when you start going for evil and when you start sinning, you will only be satiated with what? More sin. It's like that with drugs. I used to be, I used to be a druggie. But the more I had, the more I craved for more harder and deeper stuff. That, that, that's, that's, what, that's what sin does to us. We, we crave more of it and more of it. And God says, you want to go that way? I'll let you go that way. God gave them up to uncleanness and the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies amongst themselves who exchanged the truth of God for a lie. They worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who was blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions. Your, your Bible might say dishonorable, dishonorable passions. Our passions become dishonorable before God. Even their women exchanged the natural use uh, for what is against nature. And likewise, the men, leaving the natural use of the women, burned in their lust for one another. Men with men, committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of the error which was due. When our passions, when our affections, when our thoughts are turned toward the things of this world, we will always we will always produce bad fruit. And it will leave us, see, here's the thing, it will leave us empty, it will leave us bankrupt, it will leave us lonely and isolated from God. It will. So that... This right here, what we just read, it falls into the category of love that is sinful, of love that does not honor and glorify God, and it's open rebellion against God. And at its source, see, at the source, got to keep tracking things back. You ever hear the term follow the money? Well, follow it all. We follow this all the way back, all the way back to the rebellion of Lucifer in the garden. Open rebellion. And, and you know, 
that's where we're at today. This is where we're at. And I know that this isn't overly encouraging or, or anything like that, but, but we need to understand the day and age in which we live. This is, this is serious. This is, this is very serious, and we should take this seriously. The Bible takes it seriously. God wants to rescue us, rescue, rescue humanity from that. Love not this system, love not this world. Be transformed. And, and you know, this, this is not under wraps. <laughs> this is not under wraps anymore. It used to be under wraps, but it's, it's right out there. It's in your face. It's in your face and it's pushing against you every single day. That's why we have to understand. That's why, that's why we have to, the, if the church doesn't speak about this, who will? If you don't hear this, you're going to hear the lie. If you hear a lie over and over and over and over again, pretty soon you're going to what? Believe it. You're going to believe it and you're going to compromise. And you put yourself, you put your family in jeopardy of compromise. It's in our faces. And that, it's being endorsed. It's being urged along by the church. And that's true. You see, love is, love is always righteous. Love is, love is always godly. Love, love is always appropriate because God is love. God loves. God loves everyone. God loves everything. And right here, right here, we read, do not love. There are some things that we shouldn't love and we shouldn't be ashamed of of saying it and living it. Do not love. There are, there are some loves that are out of bounds. There are some loves that are unacceptable. So if you're here today and you wrestle with that, the last thing you need to do is to give in. Because a lot of people have, a lot of Christians just give in to it. We can't. We have to be true. We have to be true to the one who called us. Jesus was true and he was faithful to the end. And this world, this system, killed him. We have to be true. The last thing that we need to do is to give in to that love and define ourselves by it. Because that's the love of the world. It's not the love of God. It's the love of the world. And you're not part of that system anymore. God took you out of that. If you were of the world, then of course, drink it in. But if you're part of the kingdom of God, you have no choice. You can't have one foot in either system. You're in or you're out. I hate to say it in that simple terms, but that's, that's what we're talking about here, folks. We have to be clear on this. We can't be cloudy on this. Because if you're cloudy on this, if you drink a little bit of poison, that poison over time will, will affect you and you will be challenged and encouraged to imbibe a little more down the road. We can't do it. Don't love the world. Don't love based on your passions, your desires. And I'm just not talking, you know, I'm talking about sin, folks. I'm talking about I'm just not pointing out one category. This goes for it all, folks. 
You keep your, you keep your, you keep your mind, you keep your eyes focused on what you need to stay focused on, and you keep your pants on, and you keep your pants up. I don't know where that came from, but. <laughs> well, we had a men's meeting yesterday. You, you, you're talking more blunt terms with, with men, but you know what I'm talking about, male and female. And yes, God did create them, male and female. We have to reject the lie that says there's no love. That's, that's out of bounds. That, that's not true, folks. That's a lie. It's a lie from the pit. And many people are drinking that in to their own ruin, to their own demise. Might it not be said, might it not be said of the church of Jesus Christ, might we remain true to him and true to one another as the days become even more evil. Because God says, don't, don't love this system. I have something better for you. I have something so much better for you. Why settle, why settle for hamburger when I have steak? for you he doesn't want us to perish God doesn't want us to perish Father we thank you for giving us this time together here today and and we understand Lord that is is rather a, a sobering word but it's a word that we need to heed Lord we can't believe the lies that come to us from the world Lord we need to believe the truths that come to us through your word and help us to stand upon your word and help us to be faithful to that, Lord, no matter what. And help us to be faithful, each of us, to be faithful, Lord, to the end. And might we love each person in this world. Might we love your creation, Lord. You call us to be extravagant lovers, Lord. Help us to do that in the days ahead. Even to those who would deem us as enemies, Lord. Help us to love those that don't understand. And help us always to be willing and able to share the good news of Jesus Christ, Lord, because somebody did that exactly for us in the days gone by and help us to do that, Lord. Help us to rescue those that are still perishing, Lord. There's a world out there in desperation. There's a world out there in great need. There's a world out there that has turned upside down, Lord. Upside down because they have believed a lie. They have believed a world system, Lord, that is under the domain and dominion of the evil one, Lord. And we pray that you would send us out into all the world and that we would proclaim your love, your forgiveness, your tenderness, and the life that Jesus offers. Watch over and keep us, Lord. Encourage us and strengthen us. And we thank you so much for giving us this time together, Lord. And might we heed and, uh, and take this matter, Lord, and process it in the days ahead. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If anyone uh, would like to, uh, has issue, if you'd like to talk to me or anything like that, I would just refer you to Pastor Rod there. And, uh, and you guys have a, you guys have, a, I'm just joking. If any of you have any spiritually, emotional, or, or, or needs or questions, uh, the altar is open. The Lord's grace and blessing richly be upon you and enjoy this beautiful day that God has given us. Amen.